Hey there guys, Steve here from Coils and Coins Detecting and today I've got 10 quick tips for you. Now these tips are aimed mostly at beginners of the MindLab Equinox machine um, but even if you're an experienced user there might still be something useful there for you. As you're watching the tips uh, in the top right hand corner if I've done a video that's already covering this but in more detail uh, I'll put a link up there so you can jump, jump back to that video and watch it and once you've watched it come back and watch the rest of the tips. So, okay, let's get going. Tip number one, if your machine's not running right or you're not sure what the setup is on the machine and you want to return it to the factory defaults, what you've got to do is with the machine off, one, press, one quick press to turn it off, all you've got to do is hold that power button in for about eight seconds. Just keep holding it down until you see FP appear on the screen. That'll factory reset the machine and now it's back to how you got it out of the box. That's tip number one. Tip number two is also a factory reset option on the machine, but unlike the first tip where you factory reset the entire machine and wipe everything, uh, the factory reset type two that I'm gonna show you, all that does is it factory resets whatever mode you're in. So if we're in field one and we wanna wipe all the field one settings but leave everything else alone, all we do is we hold down the mode button for about four seconds and then you'll get an SP. Now that's factory reset field one, it hasn't touched any settings anywhere else. You can do that for every single mode individually, whether that's field one, field two, beach one, beach two, goal one, goal two, or park one, park two. All you gotta do, hold down the mode second, about four or five seconds, SP will come up. And now we're factory reset just that mode and not the entire machine. That's tip number two. All right, so tip number three is actually two tips in one, and this is gonna save your battery life when you're out in the field detecting. Um, make sure that if you're not using headphones that you don't have headphone connection uh, enabled because this will continually try to pair the Bluetooth device with the detector, and it is using battery power. So if you're not using headphones, press the Wi-Fi button once, and it will no, no longer seek your headphones out. That'll save power. Number two, um, backlight. I accidentally leave backlight on sometimes. That's a bad idea. Um, if you're out detecting during the daytime, you do not need backlight on. Just make sure it's off. Um, every time you press the backlight button, it'll be a different level of backlight. So one press is full backlight, and other one's mid medium, then low, and then off. So make sure the little backlight icon's gone and you've got no backlight on searching through the day, and that will save you quite a bit of battery life. Tip number four, if you're having trouble charging your detector, uh, so you can't snap the connector on properly or snapping on but not charging your machine, use an eraser and clean these four gold contacts on the back. Just a, an eraser, whether it's on the back of a pencil type eraser or a, an individual white eraser, just go across those terminals half a dozen times, rub it with the eraser and try charging, you'll find it works a whole lot better. So that's the next tip. Tip number five, make sure you've got the coil cable wrapped correctly around the shaft of your detector all the way up to the control panel. And if you don't do this and you have it too loose or you don't wrap it correctly, it can cause noise during detecting and it can also, uh, if it's too loose, it can actually snag on trees and various other things as you're detecting and, and damage the, the cable. So what you wanna do is come up out of the coil Wrap, go across the top of the shaft and wrap it around the shaft, not too tight, not too loose. Use uh, Velcro straps to secure it along the way, wrapping around snugly and just uh, secure here towards the top and just make sure that you're not pulling down on this connector when it goes into the back of the control, control box. Also make sure that you've got enough slack up here so as, as, the, uh, as the coil moves back and forth, it's not pulling on this point here. So just make sure you've got enough slack for that to happen, but otherwise it should be fairly snug around the shaft all the way up to the control box, and that will give you your best results. Okay, so tip number six, always noise cancel the machine whenever you start detecting or before you start detecting in any location. Uh, the reason why you do this is to stabilize the machine because there is electrical interference and electromagnetic interference all around us. And uh, if the machine hasn't been noise canceled, then it can cause a lot of interference and can cause uh, 
and cause the machine to become unusable in some situations. Um, so how do we noise cancel? Well, we go into the menu by pressing the cog button. Uh, noise cancel is the first option here. If you're not on the first option, you just keep pressing the cog button till you get to noise cancel. And then we hold the detector up the shaft uh, parallel to the ground, aim your coil at your nearest source of what you think might be electrical interference, so power lines, houses, that sort of thing. And then all you've got to do is press the accept reject button once and it'll perform an auto noise cancel. It'll run across as so and it'll then pick a channel and it'll be noise cancelled. Make sure you do that every time you start detecting somewhere, no matter when it is, where it is, and that will stabilise the machine. So tip number seven, if you're in an environment and you've got a lot of chatter, so if I increase the sensitivity, if I was out in the field and I was experiencing this kind of thing, that's called chatter. The machine's getting a lot of interference and it's jumping, the numbers are jumping around all over the place. The first thing you should always try to do um, is noise cancel, as I just showed you. And if that doesn't help, then you need to start reducing sensitivity so that the machine will become more stable. If I reduce it now down from 25 to 20, you can see the machines become more stable. So if you have chatter, the first thing to try after a noise cancel is to reduce sensitivity. That's tip number seven. Okay, tip number eight. Uh, a lot of people when they first get a detector, they don't use headphones, they just use the speaker on the, on the machine itself. And that's fine, but I'm, I'm here to tell you that headphones will increase success a lot because you can hear a lot more with the headphones on. You can hear the tones more clearly and you can sometimes hear tones that you can't otherwise hear when you're not wearing them because of surrounding noise. So tip number eight, as obvious it might seem to some of us, wear headphones they make a huge difference to your success. The next tip, tip number nine, follows on from the previous tip. Uh, use headphones. If you don't like headphones, but you still want to use a wireless type of uh, headwear, then you can use earbuds. The only thing you have to look for is that the earbuds that you're using or the headphones that you're using support the APTX low latency um, protocol. If they don't, then the lag time um, will be way too great and you won't be able to use those those headphones when you're detecting it just won't work The other thing you can do is use wired head headphones and wired earbuds um, With the WM08 uh, If you got one of these you, you will have one of these if you bought the Equinox 800 and you can just connect your uh, Headphones or your earbuds to those and then this connects wirelessly to the machine that's another way you can get the, the, the avoid the latency issue because this, when it pairs with the machine, has very little latency at all. It's very, very fast. But if you, you just go and buy yourself a set of earbuds, wireless Bluetooth earbuds off eBay or somewhere, and they do not have APTX, they won't be any good to you. They'll be too slow. And so by the time you've gone over the target and the machine's made the reported a noise, you'll hear it far too late and it, it'll be hard to identify where the actual target is. So that is the next tip, tip number nine. And the final quick tip, tip number 10. Make sure that you clean under your uh, detector coil regularly. Now, all of the mine lab coils have a skid plate on them. Most coils these days have a skid plate on them. And that just unclips, clean it out, because if you're detecting in the sand or in the, in the red dirt, you will get uh, material trapped in these little holes here and if you don't clean that out it will upset the stability of your machine so especially if you beach detect a lot make sure after every hunt or even halfway through your hunt that you take the skid plate off clean the coil and then put the skid plate back on you can easily tell which way around it goes because there's an, a section here that's different line that up with the skid plate and snap it back on so make sure you do that and then you'll find you'll have a much more stable machine and uh, it will really make a big difference. So I hope those tips made some, uh, made some sense to you all and that they were helpful. And uh, I'll bring out some more tips real soon.